Hi, this is Carly Opson at the University of Arizona. This is CERB 590 Single Case Research Design. And this is going to be a really brief video about the difference between multiple baseline and multiple probe designs. They're the, the two designs you're going to hear about in terms of multiple baseline. And there's a, there's a pretty simple difference, and I'll show you what it is. Be sure to read more about it in your text. So in a multiple baseline design, let's do a quick review. It uses a repeated A-B logic to demonstrate functional change. So you've got, you've got an A-B design here, and you couldn't withdraw this within-school consultation with a teacher to help them learn to make more specific praise statements to their students. Once you taught it, they're going to do it. You can't take it away. And so how do you demonstrate multiple examples of experimental control? In this case, they piled up A-B designs for participants. They implement them with Holly, Jill, and you can't see it, it's by my back here, but Kim. Um, and you can do this with, in a multiple baseline across behaviors, participants, and settings. Be really careful doing it across behaviors. You've got to make sure your behaviors are, are functionally similar, but functionally independent. There's more about that in another video. There's also concurrent baselines here. So these baselines, we started all these people at the same time. We collected behavior for them continuously. And there's time lagged entry into intervention. So we implemented with Holly first, we showed an effect and waited till we see an effect. Then we implement with Jill and then we implement with Kim. Okay. So what is the big problem you can run into with a multiple baseline design with a continuous baseline for each participant? Well, Two things, really. History and maturation are your biggest challenges with a continuous baseline. Okay? And history means exposure to the task during measurement that leads to improved performance. And maturation means development of the skill across time um, simply because of what time offers to the client in terms of development. So it's really important when you're teaching skills. This is just a generic graph, but just imagine that the, that the DV here, the de dependent variable, was the percent steps correct for tying shoes. So you're teaching clients to tie their shoes, and you have an intervention for that. You've divided it um, into steps, and you collect data during your sessions to see how many steps of shoe tying they get correct. And you can see that this first person is not doing great tying their shoes, right? Um, and these are listed as behavior, 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 but the, let's consider this as one person and they're learning shoe tying. Um, and then you implement the intervention, they start learning, learning to tie their shoes. If you have a second person and you're continuously giving them opportunities to tie their shoes, maybe they just start to figure it out. Maybe their, their fine motor skills start to get better just because they're doing other things in the classroom, great things that, that some therapist or teacher has set up for them. Um, maybe they're developing those fine motor skills just because you're getting giving them an opportunity to learn to tie their shoes. Maybe they just get better at it enough that it already looks during baseline like they're getting better. You don't want to implement then because it really destroys your demonstration of experimental control. Okay. Here's some other examples. Um, words read correctly. If you give some client repeated attempts at reading, Maybe they're just going to get better at reading. Percent, percent steps correct in brushing teeth. If 
a client has multiple opportunities at a skill, maybe they'll just start to get better. Hallelujah for them. Um, hallelujah for you and everybody else involved. Uh, but if you're wanting to demonstrate experimental control of your intervention, that's not going to work. Right? So what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? One thing you can do is use a variation on multiple baseline called a multiple probe design. And multiple probe means that you probe the, the dependent variable at intervals. So you don't collect a continuous baseline on the second and third clients. You simply probe their skills at periods of time and you take a few days off and you probe their skills again and you take three or four days off and you probe their skills again. The same thing happens with the last one here. I'm kind of in the way. Um, you know, it reduces this threat to history and maturation because at least it's not you giving them opportunities. Okay, um, and one thing you have to remember to do, though, is to collect continuous measures of the dependent variable just before you implement. You can see just before they implement with this next person or on this next behavior, they collect multiple days just to say, yeah, we're not it's not just an off day for this person. It's day after day or session after session. They still can't do this until I apply my intervention and then it works. Okay. Let's look at one more example, just as a summary for the difference between multiple baseline and multiple probe. Okay. So a multiple probe design started in this case with grouped measurements of the dependent variable for each behavior in this case, or it could be across settings or across clients, okay? Um, in this case, they didn't just do a measure every other day. They did like three in a row to say, look, we have them grouped. We have these measures grouped. It shows they clearly, it's not an off day, like over three days in a row, they can't do it. Then we took a week off because we didn't want them to learn the skill in between and, or we didn't want to frustrate them. Oh, I didn't mention that one. That's another one. If you're repeatedly trying to collect data from someone on something they can't do, they're as likely to get frustrated at it um, and learn some inappropriate behaviors, right? So why frustrate people? Multiple probe is a great way to keep from frustrating clients um, that you have in a design like this. So here they grouped some initial probes and then they took a break across sessions. They grouped some probes again and they had seen an experimental effect for the first client or behaviors or settings. So they started with the next one and kept the third one in control or in baseline until they had an experimental effect here. And then they moved on and implemented in the third setting with the third participant or with the third behavior. Do you have to have three? No, you don't. A classic John Umbright statement is uh, multiple means more than one. So you could have two. Generally, in research, people are looking for at least three. In my, um, my PhD program at the University of Kentucky, where I learned applied behavior analysis and um, multiple baseline technique, they wouldn't let you start a study without identifying nine situations, um, nine demonstrations of experimental control. So nine clients, um, three clients, three behaviors each. Um, you had to stack up a lot of them. And that's not a bad idea because another thing that can happen to you in a multiple baseline design is you, let's say you get three clients and two of them stop coming to therapy and then you're left with an AB design and no ex demonstration of experimental control. If, you, if you're serious about running a study, get multiple clients, identify multiple behaviors, like a lot, like probably five or six clients. 
that way if you have some clients drop you won't lose folks you don't have to stack them all up here okay let's say I I stacked up nine clients and I was going to time lag them well it could be Christmas before I get to the ninth client and they're totally frustrated whoever the parent is um, whoever the other interested parties are or even the client themselves are going to go what are you doing why am I not learning this skill why aren't you teaching me um, you can take let's say nine clients and set them in stacks of three right three here three here stack of three here to time lag you could set them in stacks of two if you wanted to to really get going okay that's your basic introduction to a difference in multiple baseline and multiple pro along with a little bit of, of uh, additional thought there at the end there's more in the book I want to tell you good book lots of examples it looks like a long read but it's mostly a lot of examples so read the book um, and I will see you online in another video all right bye bye